During this session, I'm going to be talking about electromagnetic induction, as first really identified by the great scientist Michael Faraday, a man from humble English beginnings. He really made his way and through basically a lot of fantastic scientific experimentation, uh, really got to grips with the ideas of um, electromagnetic induction, as well as a whole range of chemistry and other areas which he turned his eye to. So I'm going to start off with an example of a Faraday experiment. Okay, So Faraday had this experimental setup along these lines. He had a primary coil and it was connected to a switch and a battery. Okay, So the coil of wire went around uh, an iron uh, ring, so it was wrapped around an iron ring. Then he had a secondary coil and this was also wrapped around the same iron ring. There was no battery present, but it's attached to an ammeter to see if we could detect any flow or current. So, key thing here is that the secondary coil is not connected to the primary coil in any way. So, this was the setup, and then this is the uh, what happened. Okay, it was discovered that. At the instant the switch is closed, the galvanometer, which is a very, very uh, precise ammeter, uh, deflects in one direction and then returns to zero. So something happens, and that's really, really important. Uh, when the switch is opened, okay, the galvanometer again deflects, but this time in the opposite direction, and then returns to zero again. So that means that when there's uh, electricity is turned on for a moment, there's a current flowing and also when it's turned off there's a current flowing but at no other time okay so the galvanometer reads zero when there's a steady current or when there's no current at all through the primary circuit now these were his findings and what he concluded from this um, an electric current can be induced in a circuit by changing a magnetic field okay. so he recognized he was creating an electromagnet and uh, by changing that magnetic field, only by changing it could he create a uh, current in another circuit. Okay. And this would be the current in the secondary circuit of this experimental setup. Now, the induced current only exists for a short time while the magnetic field is changing. Remember, it just flickers at the beginning. So this is generally expressed as an induced EMF, which is an electromotive force, is produced in the secondary circuit by changing the magnetic field. Okay. So this was Faraday's uh, first experimental findings. It was refined later on into uh, Faraday's law. We're going to talk about more about that next lesson. But let's just look at what these uh, basic findings helped us find out. So this idea of induction. So something is inducing the flow of current. Now it's discovered that there's a bunch of ways which we can induce the flow of electricity. Number one, if a bar magnet moves through a coil, okay, current is induced in the coil. So if I have a bar magnet and I move it through the coil, then electric current is induced. Okay, so I have to be moving the magnet. That's very, very important. If I change the poles or switch the magnet around, then I do the same thing but this time the current flows in the opposite direction. Okay, so there's clearly a link here and a relationship which we're going to think about in more detail later on. Uh, if the bar magnet doesn't move at all, there's no current induced in the coil. Okay, so think back to that first experiment. When the electromagnet was set up and it wasn't changing, or the electromagnet was turned off completely, then there was no current induced. And the same thing with just a normal bar magnet not moving, no current is induced. We can also work vice versa, and if the coil moves past the magnet, so in this case we're keeping the magnet still but moving the coil, then what we can do, we can also induce the flow of electricity. So therefore these are all about the idea that by changing the magnetic field, either by moving the magnet, or by moving the wire, or by changing the strength of the electromagnet, as the example beforehand, we're able to create electricity. So this is the idea of induced electromotive force. 
Okay. So this happens, we're going to talk about a simple example of imagining a copper rod being moved up and down through a magnetic field. Okay. Just like the setup I've got shown here in the picture. Now, we're going to use a tool which we've come across before. We're going to use Fleming's left hand rule. Okay. So we're going to think about thumb as the force, the first thing is the magnetic field, and the second thing is the current. Now the one important feature you've got to remember here is that in this situation, the electron moving up and down, or the electron moving down, has to be treated like a positive charge moving up. And uh, what I mean by here is that uh, the flow or the movement of the electron isn't going along the wire. Okay, the movement of the electron is caused by moving the wire up and down. Okay, so that's the direction the electron's moving, and obviously uh, the direction the electron moving, the opposite direction is going to be the current. Okay. So there's a, a little bit of thinking you've got to be aware of. And let's look at this as a more detailed diagram. So here, if we have a situation where the wire is moving down, okay, so it's moving down through a horizontal magnetic field. You get your Fleming's left hand rule out. Now what you can recognize here is the first thing is going to be the magnetic field. Uh, the second thing is going to be pointing upwards. Because although the bars and copper rod is moving downwards, remember that means the electrons are moving down, so the current is in the opposite direction. So that means the force is uh, being forced onto these electrons to cause them to move towards the, in this case it becomes the negative end of the wire. Okay, so they move in that direction. So that's the basic idea as to of why that motion comes about. Uh, one of the things you're required to by the IB is to be able to deriving the induced EMF in a straight conductor. So this is a derivation. So we're going to think about it as a starting point and I'm going to take you through how you can derive uh, what the EMF is in a straight conductor moving through a magnetic field. First statement is, uh, the electrons in the conductor experience a force, okay? And the force is going to be equal to, I've got, as we're talking about electrons, I've got E, but it's the charge of the particle uh, multiplied by the voltage times by the magnetic field, okay? So that is directed along the length of the wire. Okay, so this is the force uh, which is going to be applied onto the electrons. Now, what happens here, this magnetic force, uh, the electrons move to the low end of the conducting uh, conductor, in this case, and produce an electric field inside the conductor. Okay, so what's happening here is that there's a, a force pushing them down, and then this creates an electric field. Okay. And that electric field, in turn, uh, causes, creates a, a force. And eventually, what happens is enough charge accumulates at both ends of the conductor, so an equilibrium is reached, where there's a balance between the electric and the magnetic forces. So the magnetic forces are moving the electrons originally. But as they build up, uh, we end up having a electric field inside the conductor and that creates a force as well. So these two forces are balanced. So now if we look at what these forces are made up of, we can do some further deriving. So step number one here. We know that, first of all, the force on the electrons is going to be the electric charge multiplied by the velocity multiplied by the magnetic field charge. And this is going to be equal to the force caused by the electric field, which is going to be the electric field strength multiplied by the charge. And again, this is we're using E because we're talking about electrons. Now, this means that the electric field strength is equal to the magnetic field strength multiplied by the velocity of the wire. Now, if the potential difference, and in this case it's going to be, rather than using voltage, we're going to use the term EMF, the electromotive force, okay? And we tend to use the symbol epsilon. So uh, this potential difference is caused uh, by the difference between the ends of the conductor. Now what have we here 
is the electromotive force is going to be equal to the electric field strength multiplied by the length. Okay. Now this comes about from the fact that we know the electric field strength is going to equal to the potential difference divided by the distance. In this case, the distance is going to be equal to the length of the wire, and we're considering uh, the voltage is going to be the electromotive force. It's what we're inducing, we're creating. So that's why the V term for voltage is now going to be replaced by the epsilon for electromotive force, and the distance is going to be replaced by the length of the wire. So by substitution, we work out that the epsilon electromotive force is equal to the magnetic field strength times the velocity of the straight conductor times the length. Obviously here we're assuming that the wire is uh, moving at 90 degrees to the field. So there we have the ideas behind how uh, we have induction and we've also now got a way of working out the amount of electric uh, motive force uh, created in a simple situation when there's a straight conductor moving through a magnetic field. That's the end of this session. Next session we're going to be looking in more detail at Faraday's laws and how it's used to understand electromagnetic induction.